Hi, hi, hey, everybody. Welcome to Your Voice Talk Show. I'm your host, Sonia Graham, author of It's Time to Uncover Your Original Blueprint, 10 Steps to Uncover, to Rediscover the Real You and Your Real Purpose. Uh, today, I'm super excited about today's show. Something a little different. We're actually going to have some actual cooking in the house. Um, the, the topic is guess who's cooking. And today, cooking live, we have Paula Harrison. So can we go ahead and bring Paula on? Hey, Paula. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. hi. How are you? I am well. How are you doing, Sonia? I am doing wonderful. You know, I'm super, super excited to have you on here. For the most part, you guys are going to see Paula's beautiful face more than you'll see me in a little bit. We want to really see what she's doing in that kitchen. Um, so the first thing I wanted you to do, Paula, if you could first tell us a little bit about you and then tell us what Choose Life, that you said, I Choose Life, what that is, please. Um, okay, so I am originally from Connecticut. I come from a family where my mom was West Indian. So I grew up in a household where um, cooking was important, um, but we ate a little bit different than most of my friends because of my, my, my mom's West Indian background. Um, one of those things is we ate very healthy. We didn't eat fried foods. Um, we rarely ever went to doctors a bit visits. My mom would have us drink a tea or put something together or what have you. So that was those were things that were instilled in me as a, a young child. Mm -hmm. Didn't know which direction I was going to go in um, as I got older. I remember when I was little, and some of you probably can attest to this, you know, when we were younger. And um, the older people just always say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so I used to always say, I don't know. I just want to help people. That's all I um, knew. That I just want to help people. And so here it is, you know, 60 plus years later. And um, God has graced me to be able to do that. I started, um, I choose life, it evolved. I had a business in um, 30 years ago that was called the Light of Life. I helped people who were severely overweight to eat healthy. And at that time, um, that was a part of my journey, um, eating healthier. I um, was only eating poultry at the time, and I had a mentor who was a holistic um, doctor who mm -hmm. um, I had some issues with myself. We discovered it was because I was eating poultry, and I decided that I wanted to live opposed to being unhealthy. And so I decided that day mm -hmm. that I'm not, no longer will I eat poultry. So I became pescatarian. So pescatarian, meaning that I only ate um, seafood, but I still ate um, dairy. I did that for um, about 20 years or so. But in my journey, I realized that some way there down the road that I was going to become um, plant-based or vegan at that particular time, should I say. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how. I didn't know when. I just knew that it was coming because I knew my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. So it's been almost seven years, and I um, I did a competition, a bigger competition, and I told myself the day after I did that show, because I was a um, pescatarian, that I was going to go um, plant-based. And I have known without a shadow of a doubt that that was the best decision of my entire life. I was a healthy wow. person. I ate um, healthy. But there's just a change. There's just a shift that happens within you when you turn over to a plant-based lifestyle. So within that transition, evolving again, I Choose Life was um, came out of it because plants are life and I want people to choose life. So I Choose Life. I love um, that. And I Choose Life too, meaning that also, instead of saying I Choose Life also, I just said too, because mm -hmm. I want you, Sonia, I want the people that I know um, or people that I don't know. I want you to choose life with me. So I say, I choose life. Yes. Too. Yes. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, one of the things that there's so many misconceptions with all the different types, you know, you have vegan, you have vegetarian, you have pescatarian, you have plant-based. So can you break each one down for us a little bit? Sure. Um, so as it relates to someone who is vegan, that's someone who does not eat any um, animal products, most people, and then this is where it kind of gets a little tricky, because way back in the day, if you said you were vegan, that meant that you didn't wear any products that were made or derived from an animal. So the shoes that you wore, the pocketbook that you carried, the belt that you put on, all of those things were um, vegan. They did not come from any source of any type of animal. Gotcha. Today, 
that word vegan is used a little loosely. And so people say that they're a vegan, but they're not 100% vegan in that aspect. Yeah, one of the reasons why I also say that I am plant-based. So plant-based means that you um, don't eat any animal products, dairy or anything like that. And your food is derived from plants, you know, fruits and vegetables. And you try mm -hmm. to eat as whole as you possibly can as far as non-processed um, foods. Someone yeah. who is um, pescatarian, of course, that person, um, they eat only seafood, fish or shellfish. shellfish. They don't eat, eat um, any animal meat, um, but they do do uh, dairy products. Gotcha. Someone who is vegetarian, they don't do any animal products as far as meat that they eat. However, they do do dairy, um, eggs, and things like that. So that's the uh, main difference. So that's one of the reasons, like I say, I say that I am plant-based because I cannot tell you. Now, I recently started, if I buy a pocketbook, I try to buy a vegan um, pocketbook, but I cannot tell you that everything, the shoes that I wear, I don't know like if an animal was used for those sometimes. So right. that's why for those people who are, who are truly vegan, my hands go out to them. So I don't use that word loosely. And I say that I am plant-based. Right, right. And then Paula, uh, what is a pocketbook? I'm joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, listen, so Would you like to tell the audience what a pocketbook know. is, please? So, so people here say a purse. And purse to me is like your wallet that you put in a pocketbook. So yes, that's the difference. I, I, that's what we yes. call it. It depends too. on what region you're from, right? <laughs> right. Some people might not know what that is. You have pop, you have soda, and you have pocketbook, you have purse. So, so now everybody knows. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'm glad that you said that because I say that so often and people do question me like, what is a pocketbook? And I'm like, what you call a purse is what a pocketbook is. So yes, that's what that I is. just want to <laughs> make sure everybody understands what Miss Paula is saying. I don't want them to miss anything today. Right. So, exactly. Exactly. So Paula, what are what are you going to cook for for us today? What so today I am, and I'm actually while we're talking, I'm going to go ahead and get started if that's okay. Okay. Right. Because well, we're going to flip you on the big screen so we can see uh, you and see all those details. We're going to flip you on okay, the big screen. Okay. So today we're going to make a uh, a seafood um, pasta. Okay. And I put in about maybe about two tablespoons. I use um, grapeseed oil. Um, a lot of people will say uh, when they're cooking that they use um, avocado oil. However, mm -hmm. avocado oil is not meant to be heated to a high temperature. So you shouldn't cook with it. If you're going to use avocado oil, you should use that just like if you're making um, a salad dressing. Right. Gotcha. So okay. to this oil, all I've added is I cut up a shallot, which is a type of an onion. And I've got some mixed uh, peppers in there. I've got red, um, yellow, orange peppers in there. And I just want these to, to saute down, okay? One thing I'm going to talk about this is that we're going to use, um, for a part of our meat texture, we're going to use, um, these are oyster mushrooms or king trumpet mushrooms because of um, the long trumpet that they have. I buy all of my um, mushrooms from the far farmer's market and I use one specific company, which is called Lone Star Mushrooms. I use mm -hmm. them because I've been to their mushroom farm on several occasions, so I know how everything is grown and I trust them 100%, okay? Mm -hmm. um, a little pricey, so usually like, I guess a pound of these are like $10 and I bought two pounds, so that was $20 that I spent just on mushrooms. I know sometimes people will say, um, Sonia, that cooking plant-based can be expensive in some areas, but how important is your health, right? I mean, right. is your health important enough that you want to so right. in? I know people who will go to a steak restaurant and spend $100 for a meal. That's true. So, you know, I'm just you saying. Choose. You choose. You, 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 you definitely right? choose. So anyway, yeah, we're just sauteing down the onions and the uh, peppers, and this is going to be make up a part of the um, seafood pasta. Okay, another meat like substance that I'm using is I took um, hearts of palm, the hearts of palm is a vegetable, and I took those and I put them in a and they come like in a bowl, I put them in a food processor and I shredded those down because I wanted them to be 
um, a little bit finer. Mm -hmm. Parts of palm are, they grow like, just like you would think, a palm tree. And they take that mm -hmm. tree and they cut it down. They take the bark off of it and they've got rolls of palm and it's called hearts of palm. Most places harvest the hearts of palm right there as they cut down the tree. They have a facility that they take that um, wow. tree to, they take the bark off and they do it right then. So there's not a lot that is processed when you buy a hearts of palm, okay? So I'm gonna add all of this. And Paula, I'm sorry, you, uh, we're gonna have uh, some questions during, are you okay with people asking questions and stuff during the sure, interview? Sure. Okay, you know, wonderful. Uh, even though we're contact lenses, so you just make sure you read the questions to me and I'll answer them, okay? Yeah, well, okay, sounds awesome. <laughs> All right. So, we add the hearts of palm. Hearts of palm, you can find those in the grocery store. Um, they're usually about three, four dollars in a jar. Um, and I added two jars, okay? Because I bought a lot of, a lot of meat to it. Okay, so in hearts of palm, they actually, the taste of it has a little bit of already a seafood taste um, to it, right? This is the same way that I was making, if you want to call them, I call them crab list because they're not crab, but crab list cake. This is almost the same way that I would make those, okay? So my seasoning, I'm going to add a little bit of, of, of green onion. I'm gonna add something that's called nori shiitake, which is a seafood. It's just like, um, I've got large kelp pieces with the seaweed to give it a little bit more of a seaweed flavor to it. So I'm gonna add some of that in here. And then I'm gonna add these uh, pieces of kelp in here as well. And so Sonia, like when you cook seafood, um, do you add Old Bay to any of your food? Old Bay seasoning. Um, I, I've heard a lot of people using the Old Bay. That's the flavoring for that. That gives it that seafood flavor. Say that again. You heard what? That's what gives it the seafood flavor? Yes. Old Bay? Yes. Yeah. So, like, when people make, like, seafood boils, a lot of times they'll add that. I'm not going to add a lot because I don't want it to be, um, it has a lot of salt in it, so I don't want it to be too salty. So then we're talking about high blood pressure, okay? And we don't right. that, right? I'm going to add um, a little bit of Tony Sachery, but this has no salt. This is a no salt flavor to it. So it has everything in it that um, your normal Tony Sachery has, except for salt. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I've mixed all of this up. And this, like I say, is a part of the meat that I'm going to put in um, my pasta, right? So all of this has been mixed up. I'm now going to take this because I just needed to heat it. I didn't need to like, I don't need to like drown it as far as cooking. And so Paula, our texture is important. Done, I'm going to mix and put everything together. This will actually allow you, and if, if you were in my kitchen, you would think that I was cooking something that was seafood because that's how it smells. And that's no joke. I'm telling you the truth. I tell you, okay. when you fix that dish for me that you're fixing right now, remember I had to call you and say, hey, Paula, remember I told you that um, I couldn't have the gluten and I couldn't have gluten. <laughs> you said, Sonia, yeah. there is no meat and there's no gluten in it. <laughs> yes. Well, this is basically the same thing. I've altered just a little bit just to make it a little bit better, I think. Um, so the next thing that we're going to make is I'm going to make like a... Um, a seafood sauce that I want to put in here. So we are going to take um, a little bit of butter and put in here. Mm -hmm. To this butter, I am going to add um, onions. I know we have shallots in that, right? So I'm going to take and add maybe like half of an onion. My seasonings that I'm going to add are going to be um, a little bit of fresh thyme and some parsley. So I'm gonna add that in. And when I always say seasonings, when it comes down to my fresh herbs, because they are seasoning. Seasoning is is not just you know your powders that you put in. You know, your herbs act as seasonings as well too, right? Gotcha. So we got thyme and we've got parsley in here. And I'm gonna add 
a little bit of garlic to this. So this is probably about four or five garlic bowls. We're just simply going to saute this down. And so when I'm cooking um, my other seasonings that are fresh herbs, I like to season them because it helps all, everything to try to like marinate or to marry together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So in here, I just have um, a little bit of, of garlic powder and a little bit of um, paprika. So I'm going to add that in here. And this is just an added sauce that I'm going to add to it. So like I said, the one that I made you before was good. But this one is just going to be just a little bit different. Okay. And then to that, remember I said I want to have that seafood flavor. So to this sauce, I'm going to add a little bit of um, seaweed, which is going to help to give me that seafood flavor. Wow. And all I did is add all this together and saute it down. You still with me, Sonia? I'm sorry. I said, are you still with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. All right, so all of that has sauteed down. And I'm gonna take down this. Remember I said everything is gonna everything is gonna all come together in, in the end. So I sauteed all of that down. Everybody see that? Okay, and now we're going to take that and put this aside in a bowl as well. All right, and then next, we're going to make uh, a cheese sauce. So we've got these two ingredients that we're going to add, and we're going to make a cheese sauce. And I'm going to make a cheese sauce with, first of all, using, again, um, butter and flour is going to be my base you want to use equal parts of both okay so let's just say i put in um, a quarter of a cup of butter in there if i put in a quarter of a cup of butter then i want to put in a quarter cup of flour as well and what kind of flour are you using flour i'm using a gluten-free all-purpose flour So the butter's in there. I'm just going to take so two tablespoons equals like a quarter of a cup of flour. Take and mix those together. When you mix it, this is just like you know how you make gravy, Sonia. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Uh huh. You still with me? So just like you're making uh, gravy, it's the same thing. Okay. So I put mm -hmm. these two together, just like I'm making gravy. And then to this, I am going to add, I'm just using a regular, well, first I'm going to add a little bit of milk. So I'm using oat milk. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit of milk in there and mix that together. I want it to still stay thick, right? Mm -hmm. And then to that, I'm going to add some cheese. I just have a regular vegan cheddar cheese and I'm going to mix these together. I want the cheese to melt down. Hey Paula. Down. I'm also going to add, now I know a lot of people question this, but I've always done this when I'm making a cheese sauce, because I always add a little bit of uh, cream cheese. So I'm going to add a little bit of cream cheese to it, because I want it to be creamy. <laughs> Hey Paula. Well, Michelle, do you have some questions? I have uh, Erica. I have Erica. She wants to know what was the last sauce for? What was okay. the last what? The, the last sauce. sauce. What was the last sauce? I'm so sorry. What was the last? And I, then I can't hear you after that. It says, "What was the last sauce?" Oh, the last sauce. That was just a seafood sauce that I made, a very simple seafood sauce that I'm going to add to um, that I'm going to add to this pasta when I make it because I want it to have like a really really good um, seafood flavor. Uh -huh. So opposed to just the crab like uh, um, mix gotcha. that I made, I want 
had to have an extra seafood sauce taste to it. So I made just simply um, the seaweed, some onions, uh, seasoning of paprika and garlic, some fresh garlic, some butter, and I sauteed that down. All right. Okay. Gotcha. So now I'm making just a simple cheese sauce. Stirring all of this up to be nice and see how it's nice and cheesy, nice and cheesy, right? I want all the cheese to melt, and this was just simple flour. Okay, all of this to melt down. All right. So guess what? We got all of our parts done. I've already pre-made the pasta. And let's see, let me get this one over here. All right, so now I have all of my ingredients done. I try to cook as fast as I can so that I don't bore people. <laughs> So let me clean up my little area right here. I know what that's like. I don't like. Somebody said yummy. Erica said yummy. Again, any uh, questions, guys, make sure you leave the questions in the comments or you can call the phone number that's uh, going to be on the on the screen and we'll be glad to get your questions answered. But I bet you it smells good in your kitchen there, Paula. Yes, it smells wonderful. So we got everything <laughs> together. Here's my pasta. So pasta. Okay. So I'm so good at cleaning up, I threw the box away. However, I used a chickpea pasta. You can get it from H-E-B, Trader Joe's, Sprouts. They all sell it. It's made of chickpeas, and you make it just like how you make your regular pasta. You know, you want it al dente, so you make it, you know, you just boil it for like seven or eight minutes. Here's my pasta, right? To my mm -hmm. pasta, I am going to add my crab-like meat. So I'm going to add all, all of this in here. Mm -hmm. So you're right. I wish you could be in here to smell this. <laughs> yes. This so Victoria, so Victoria just I'm says she wish she could have some. Huh? I said uh, Victoria just posted she wish she could have some because she had it during Christmas. I'm telling you, her and um, Gregory, they really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so much. Victoria, thank you so much. It, it smells just like seafood in here. Then I'm going to add my um, sauce that I made because I want to give it like an extra little like kick, right? So mm -hmm. we're mixing this together now. And then to this, I am going to add the cheese sauce that I just made. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pour this in. Let's see how much I need. Just like your normal cheese sauce, so I'm mixing this all together. Wow. All right. Mixing this all together in here. So we're just going to use it all. Why not, right? <laughs> all right. Added the cheese sauce. So we've got all of our ingredients mixed together. Now, here's the thing. At this particular point, after you mix everything together mm -hmm. and you put it in, you know, whatever pan that you're going to use, you could bake it all up or not because everything in here is already cooked. So you don't have to bake it if you don't want to. That is oh, totally wow. Good, right? Well, that's a time here. saver. Huh? That's a time saver. Right. Everything, everything is already prepared, right? So... We are going to put it, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a large plate because I want you to be able to see it a little bit better, okay? Okay. Because I have one more thing I'm going to add to this. So see how, do you see how that looks? Mmm, yummy. Can you see how that looks, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to take, just put some of this on the plate as if we were going to serve it. If we're ready to okay. serve it, right? All right, 
That's what we have right here on the plate. Everybody see that? Wish you could see that. See, see, see. Yeah, we can see right. that one. Uh -huh. thing that I did prior to um, this is, remember I said we start out with these king trumpet mushrooms? Mm -hmm. So if you've watched my show before, I have air fried several things. It's really simple. You make a batter out of a flour, your milk, whatever seasonings. Make it like a thin pancake batter. And then I use pan go instead of bread crumbs and I use gluten-free panko. Um, so you dip your item, which were the mushrooms here, in mm -hmm. the wet batter. They get wet and then you shake them in the panko. You put them in your air fryer. You give it a light spray. I put my air fryer on 400 for about 10 minutes and I have, these are my seafood. This is my seafood topping now for this pasta. I added some of the um, seaweed on here i also added a little bit of like fish sauce because i wanted a vegan fish sauce of course i wanted to have more of that fish kind of flavor and i am a person if you know me you know i try to work on presentation because i want things to be pretty for people i, I want it to be a case where they look at it and say hmm i might want to try that okay and then lastly i am going to take some green onions mm -hmm. and I'm just going to do a quick little just to cut of some green onions and I'm going to sprinkle them over the top. Hey Paula, then, Erica says she's on her way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks so delicious. A seafood pasta. I know it was a few different steps that I made. Um, and a few things I did a little bit, like I always try to, you know, chop my ingredients and things like that ahead of time. So it's, like mm -hmm. I said, I don't bore people with just chopping the onion, you know, you know chopping my peppers or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't need for me to tell you, like chop a pepper or chop a onion. That's how you chop it, you know? Um, so I try to pre-put things together so it does not take um, a length of time. And you're right. So prepping, so prepping is very important, and right? Huh? Is prepping very important? Preparation, prepping the food. It is. It is because here's the thing: if you are trying to um, prepare a few items, if you chop up a couple of onions and put them in a you know glass jar or container or something like that, green onions, whatever the things that you normally use garlic or what have you then that mm -hmm. way when you go to use it it's already ready you can do it and put it in the freezer ah, you know yeah. you don't have to just keep it in your refrigerator take a day where it's a, a day that you prep prep those items package them up put them mm -hmm. in your freezer so that way when it's time for you to say oh i need half an onion okay well grab a handful that's half an onion it's already done you don't have to take the time right. to make the prep for it right right but that makes yeah. sense that makes sense um my question to you is uh, on the gluten. We didn't talk really too much about gluten free. Can you tell a little bit about gluten free and what you learned from it from experience eating gluten free? Well, I, so as a plant based um, person, I don't eat gluten and I don't prepare anything for anybody with gluten. So you won't come in my house and find anything with gluten in it. Um, and I recall from some years ago, I'm going to say when I first start out plant-based now I did do gluten because I wasn't thoroughly educated and I didn't know as much as I know now right mm -hmm. um so maybe four ish years ago um Dr. Sabi talked on as far as the fact of gluten and how gluten basically is man-made and it's a chemical mm -hmm. so it's not it's it's made by man it's not something that is plant derived right he also right. talks about how gluten, uh, when it goes into your system, because what gluten is is a binder, right? It, it, it brings two things together and holds those things together. Yes. So he said when it goes into your system, basically, and this is my layman's term analogy, it clogs up various areas and things in your body. So iron is very important to our body. That's like our battery. That's, that's like our energy. That's what helps mm -hmm. us to keep you know, going and moving, right? Yeah. So iron and various nutrients are not able to travel and get through our body like they need to be. And then they cause deficiencies. They cause inflammations. They cause illnesses. 
in our body, right? Yeah. So when I heard that, I realized that's not something that I want to put into my system because it's a chemical, first of all, so I didn't want to put it in my system. So I stopped doing it. Um, wow. and, and as a result of it, it actually was at the point where it was going to start causing problems within my system. I don't know if it's because I was thinking it and then it tried to manifest. I don't know. But mm-hmm. my body is, um, I'm so in tune with it that even if there is something I eat and they say that it is gluten free, mm-hmm. you know, they say if it doesn't have like a certain percentage of something in it, they can get away with saying that it's, you know, sugar free, dietary, whatever the case is. Right. Cross contaminated. And I will have a reaction from it knowing that there was some bit of gluten in there that they weren't out about, which is why I try to cook everything myself because when you cook yourself, then you know what ingredients you're using. That's and right. I know that that's, that's free as well too, right, Sonia? Yes. As you know, with me, I have celiac. So with the, with the celiac, gluten for me, uh, it dissolves the villia in your small intestines. So it's even worse. Uh, right. But that's why I couldn't believe that, that dish you just prepared. <laughs> it was so good. I think, yeah. What the, here's the thing, though. There are so, like, think about it. People who have celiac, right, or have been diagnosed with it. I don't want to give anybody a particular diagnosis, but there were so many people like years ago that never, I mean, like I didn't know like 10 years ago, I maybe know one person that has it yet. Now it's like every other person, you know, there are so many yeah. people out there that have been given that diagnosis and it's because of the fact of what you eat. That's so true. Yeah. And it's like yeah. you said, the food's not real food, it's engineered. It's right. engineered food. So I, I would like to open it up. Well, Claudette is asking, she said, it looks really good. Uh, will you be sharing the recipe? Because she missed some things. Sure, I can, um, I don't know, I can provide like the, the um, recipe and the ingredients for you. I know one thing you you asked me, and a lot of people ask me this question as far as like, how do you get to the point of like, how do you decide what recipe you put things together? And there's a lot of, of reasons a lot of ways that happens one way for me is that um like on the show that i did prior to this is that i i went to a restaurant some years ago i ate something and i came home and thought now how can i make that better or what would i, I change in that that you know speaks to my health or speaks to me right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so for a lot of people a lot of people think that they can't go play based because they feel like they're gonna be losing certain things and i tell them okay so the food that you used to eat, I mean, 99.9% of everything that you make can be um, turned into a plant-based meal. Mm. Here's the thing. Some people will say, well, you know, I just can't give up or I, I just can't do without or I've got to have. And I yeah. pose the question to them. So they say, well, you know, I just like cheese so much. And I said, well, here's the thing. We were taught from a young age eating cheese that came from a cow that we were supposed to have in the first place because that's not milk that we should have been consuming, right? So how do you know that that is what cheese is supposed to taste like? How do you know that it's not supposed to taste like what plant-based cheeses taste like? How do you know that? That's true. You don't. Right. We just become conditioned, like you say. We don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So for so many people who are out there, we all I'll do the same thing because you can go to um, like Pinterest and put in how do you make um, plant-based enchiladas, we'll just say, and you will come up with 50 different recipes. And I guarantee you 25 of them are all the exact same recipe by different people. Do you think that they all like came up with that same recipe or do you think that they just looked at somebody's recipe and said, oh, well, maybe I'll just take the salt out and now it's my recipe. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. I know for myself, there are sometimes I go places and I think, oh, okay, well, I can mix this together with this and this and this and then come up with something a little mm-hmm. bit different. Yeah. I mean, we all do it. Um, you know, when I ate the, the dish for Christmas, what I really noticed is that the textures, 
because it's, it's like it, it tricks your brain thinking that it's the texture that you're like you said how do you know what that's supposed to smell like but i i felt like when i so now i know what i chew what i when i was eating the uh the mushroom i thought it was shrimp <laughs> or whatever i thought it was the seafood whenever i called you right. and i was like wait a minute you're just in here you know so right. I, I think you you probably have mastered textures and then um probably the seasonings are important too right knowing how what seasonings work well together right you will find most people who are um especially plant-based that we use a, a core of the same seasonings which of course salt and pepper but onion powder garlic powder um cumin smoked paprika maybe paprika i mean those are like the core seasonings that we use so now you can branch off if you're trying to um, do something and you want to have like a smoky flavor. You can use some liquid smoke or some coconut amino or something like that. Mm -hmm. But those are the core um, seasonings basically that we use. And, you know, it just depends. If you're doing uh, Mexican, you might add a little bit of chili powder to the cumin to give it that more of a kick of a Mexican taste, right? If you're doing right. Italian, of course, you're going to put in, you know, your oregano, your thyme or what have you, right? If you're doing... Um, jerk of course you're going to put in your scotch bonnet you know peppers or a scotch bonnet kind of a seasoning mm -hmm. you know curry of course you're going to use like a curry powder but the basis of it you're still going to find onion powder garlic powder salt pepper i mean you're going to find those at the basis of it wow that's interesting what is your yeah. favorite thing what's your favorite dish that you enjoy eating uh this plant-based it really just depends. I mean, um, my favorite soup is butternut squash soup. Um, okay. My favorite, let's see, one of my favorite raw foods, because um, especially during the summer, I eat a lot more raw food. I used to be like 90% raw plant-based um, a few years ago. So my one of my favorite ones is after I juice the uh, juice of the carrots, I take the pulp and I make like an untuned with it and you can put that inside of like a lettuce wrap or a collard wrap or something like that um wow. and then let's see of a cooked meal i would say maybe um i don't know i love mushrooms and cauliflower so i like to air fry those but i also like eggplant so mm -hmm. um, um, like, like harm maybe that might be one of my favorite ones i don't know i i've got a variety of them but those are like my go-to i would think mm -hmm. that's it yeah and then you know the neat thing is i know you pre you prep some things but just to know that where a lot of people say it takes a lot of time it didn't take you that long to do that at all right well here's the thing if you now for me i'm a very structured person so it's a little bit easier for me because i'm just that structured for some people they're not right so mm -hmm. my suggestion to people so that they won't get so like overwhelmed with the fact of what they're doing is okay let's say you take um maybe you make a a, 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 a pasta kind of a sauce a tomato based sauce that you mm -hmm. make and you use you know mushrooms or cauliflower or lentils as your like you know protein part of it that you're going to put in it right so you've got a mm -hmm. sauce what can you make with those things so you could have you could make um like just say meatballs and have a sub you've got the sauce already made of course, you can make the meatballs and have spaghetti. You've got the sauce and the meatballs already made. You could take the, what you make the meatballs from and make like a meatloaf and you've got the sauce already made, right? So sometimes it's a case of if you're making um, like taco meat, you can have, use that meat and have tacos. You know, use that meat mm -hmm. and have a taco salad. Use that meat and make a taco bowl. Use that meat and make enchiladas. Use that meat and make burritos. Make that meat, use that meat and make quesadillas. So Sometimes don't make it so difficult for yourself. Have one core thing that maybe you can make two or three items from and you won't be so overwhelmed because you got wow. your core of what you're using. Now you're just making something from it. I did um, like one show, Sonia, where I did, um, uh, I took a salad. And from that salad, I added one item and made another meal. So I put this, everything that I put in my salad, I added mm -hmm. uh, quinoa. And I took the onions and the mushrooms that were in the salad and the kale, and I sauteed those, and I made a mm -hmm. um, grain bowl. 
from the grains bowl, I took and added black beans and I mashed them up and I put all of those ingredients that started from a salad inside of the uh, a burger and I made a black bean burger. All I did was add mm -hmm. one ingredient to each thing that I made and I, I had three, three different meals. It started out as a salad. Wow. That's... Yeah. So some people, they you overthink it. You know, you overthink it. Or think about like, what are your favorite meals? What things do you like? How can I take this out? Maybe take the dairy out, you know? Um, how can I transition as far as the meat is concerned that, that's in there and make a particular um, meal? Don't overthink everything. It start out simple. Start out right. simple. Most people who start out plant-based, even though I don't eat processed foods, but most people uh, will start with processed foods because they go to the grocery store and they find you know, the frozen burgers or whatever that they that they sell in the grocery store, the crumpled meat or whatever. Um, that's not really good, but 99% of people who are plant-based, we all started there. It wasn't good, but no, that's where we started. So, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you can't be judgmental, but it just so happens that I know how to cook. So now I can say, okay, instead of buying a black bean burger, I know how to make one, right? But you could take that black right. burger and make some meatballs with it or make a meatloaf with it out of the same thing that you made the black bean burger with. And you got three different meals. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. Can yeah. you talk about Jack? I keep hearing about jackfruit. What is the, can you tell me like how that's used for uh, plant-based or vegan cooking? You said you keep hearing about what? Jackfruit. Oh, jackfruit. Fruit. So yeah. jackfruit, if you buy the fresh jackfruit, you're going to get like a sweeter uh, kind of a fruit that people can use. Like you can make smoothies with it. You can make, um, you know, ice cream with it or something like that. Right. Um, they say that if you eat, I think it's like 10 or 12 of the jackfruit pods that are in the, uh, the uh, fresh jackfruit, that it will sustain you for hours as far as a meal. So people can actually use it to their benefit for weight loss. Right. If you buy, which a lot of people talk about jackfruit, if you buy the jackfruit that comes in the brine that is in um, the can, that's what most people use for their meat substitute for tacos, for enchiladas, or um, some people make like a stew out of it, right? And um, you can make un un tuna. So instead of making tuna fish, you can use that to make tuna with it. Um, you can make dips with it. So it's very versatile. Because it will take on the flavor of whatever you're trying to use it for. So, like, I've used it to make um, um, jackfruit tortilla soup, right? So, instead of it using, like, a chicken, I'm shredding the jackfruit and I'm putting that in a soup. I've used it to make tacos with. Um, mm -hmm. I've used it in enchiladas before. Um, just a variety of things. And so, it's very popular. Um, most people buy it from an Asian grocery store because you normally cannot find it in your normal just like if you went to your local H-E-B or Sprouts or something like that you usually have to go mm -hmm. to the grocery store to be able to find it gotcha okay yeah. well I'm going to not be greedy with these and let some people uh, Michelle can you share some of the questions from our from the audience with Ms. Lola okay um, the only question that I see in this connection is really bad so um if someone wanted to ease into adding more plant-based items how would you suggest they do it is it easier to do full meal or add little items at a time to a regular meal okay so i tell people if that that really depends on you most, most people i say I, let's go back because this is one of my takeaways I always tell people this when they say, you know what, I want to, you know, go into a plant-based lifestyle and I say, say this, you got to know your why. Like, why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you heard that your friend did it, she lost 25 pounds, you think, oh my God, if I go plant-based, I can lose some weight. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm say. <laughs> because you're not going to last for the most part. Okay. If you say, you know, I've had people that I've dealt with a friend of mine um, about four or five years ago who was diagnosed with severe gout. And he came to me, he said, Paul, my doctor said that I have to go on a plant-based diet in order for me to get out of this pain that I am in. And I first, without even knowing 
the doctor is I applauded the doctor because most doctors are not gonna tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he changed how he ate and within the course of I don't know, I want to say a three or four months, he wasn't taking the medication any longer than they had given him. He didn't have any flare ups. A year later, he had had not had any kind of flare ups just from changing to a fitness lifestyle. So, for some people, if it is a case where your health is uh, um, a factor, it may push you into saying, Man, I want to get healthy by all means, and I don't want to have to take another chemical on top of what I'm already doing in order to get healthy. So if you have that is why I, I know a lot of people that will push you into saying, okay, this has got to be my lifestyle now because I just want to be healthy. So you've got to know mm. why you are doing this because that is what's going to sustain you. For most people that in my opinion or that I have seen that um, have a health issue, they usually are apt to make it a lifestyle because they want to be healthy and they want to come out of whatever it mm -hmm. is that they have been diagnosed with. If it is a case where you're thinking that it is a quick fix for something, you usually do not last. So I would say if it's something that maybe you just desire and you don't necessarily know your whole why, right? then mm -hmm. take it one day at a time, right? Don't eat the whole elephant, just take a bite, right? So just if it's a bite. A case, you said, on Mondays, Okay, Mondays, I'm eating everything plant-based. My breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. Good. The rest of the week, I'm just going to continue what I've been doing. Maybe you do that for 30 days. And then the next month, you say, I'm going to add on, it's going to be two days instead of one day. And you do that for 30 days, okay? To you, you know, you get a little bit better, you know, accustomed to it, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, you skip in between. Maybe you say, okay, okay. Um, I don't know that I can do that completely, but maybe I can just replace one meal. Maybe I'll do breakfast every day, plant-based. Maybe I'll do lunch, plant-based. Maybe I'll do dinner, plant-based. An easy way to do it, if you're a person like me, I love all kinds of salads. And there are a mega amount of salads that you can do. So maybe you just switch up your salad from day to day for lunch. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, That's I, awesome. I can say, know your why, and then just ease into it. Just ease into it. Don't try to just, you know, I'm, I can be the type of person, like if I have to do something, I'm just like a cold turkey, but I'm just going to do it. I'm just jumping head all the way in. Everybody is not necessarily good with that. And if you know you're not good with that, then that's okay. Just don't beat yourself up about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And, you know, I think the main thing is uh, giving yourself that grace to know it's going to take some time. Right. You know? It's not going to be right. overnight. What about sugar? Can you talk to us about sugar? How does sugar come into play with plant-based eating? Well, when it comes down to sugar, first of all, we need to know that um, that causes a quick aging process. It, it, it deteriorates so many things within our body. Um, it causes and wreaks havoc within our body. Okay. Um, here's one thing that I want to say, and, and, and it kind of helps with, goes along with sugar. Sugar is that. Um, I'm going to say this, and I'm not trying to be judgmental against anybody, and I, I'm not trying to, you know, say it in the mm -hmm. wrong thing, in the wrong thing, but you'll understand what I'm saying. A lot of times people will say the little saying as far as, you know, black don't crack. Because on the outside, we will tell people, oh, I'm 75 years old, we look like we're 40, and that's absolutely wonderful. But on the inside, we have cracked. <laughs> because it will be a case where you consume the wrong things and, you know, you, you're not feeding your body the nutrients that it needs. So if it's a case for, like for me, I don't do like white sugar. I haven't had that in, I don't even know how long, maybe I'm um, seven, eight years or something like that, right? If I need a sweetener, um, my sweetener of choice is agave. And I use that sparingly. If I'm making something, I might use, um, like, uh, I made some cookies for my job uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the um, recipe only called for two tablespoons of maple, or I use mm -hmm. some organic maple syrup, which is not that much, right? So I don't use sugar, um, and I would say if you could get away from it, because I, it's funny, I just saw um, someone post the other day about if you drank I think like a soda day where there's like four teaspoons of soda or what have you in it. 
a at lot. The end of it, we would have had, I don't know, five pounds or four or five pounds of sugar in just a month. You know how much that is in your system? That it's wow. like mind boggling, you know? And that not just soda, but there's so many drinks out there. You know, um, if you go to a local, usually like a coffee shop, most of those drinks are, are like a very high percentage of them are sugar more than they are coffee, you know? Yeah. And so you've got to think about what you are putting inside your body. Sugar ages you. It, 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 it makes, work, makes havoc on your skin, you know? Um, wow. I don't know. I would just say if you can do an alternative, that's another thing. Maybe... You know, if you're trying to go plant-based and you say, I want to, I need to lower my sugar for my health, maybe um, find, I don't do honey, but you know, I'm not against it, but that's what you do. I know a lot of people who are vegan don't do honey, honey because of bees, and I get that. Mm -hmm. I, my purpose is just a guy, I mean, that's why I use it opposed to honey. But, you know, maybe replace that sugar, you know, in your coffee with something else. And then maybe the rest of the day you have, you know, sugar, and then maybe... As time goes on, you can replace whatever you drink your beverage for lunch. Maybe that if it's gotcha. like that, you can replace that with something as well. You know, it's something to really consider because it's it's not good for your body. So, so tell me about um, like substitutes. Like, is honey okay? Honey is okay. Yes, it's just that a lot of people who are if you're a true vegan, you don't do honey because um, honey is derived from bees so and they don't they don't consume gotcha. honey because of that reason I, I just don't do honey because it's not my preference and I just prefer to use um, agave I'm not I'm not I'm not a very judgmental person when it comes down to a person in a plant-based lifestyle because for me mm -hmm. like I help people to transition to that lifestyle and um, I, I, I want people to transition so I don't want to be like that. You can't have this. You can't have that. You can't do, you know, because the next thing you know, you're going to run somebody off saying, okay, well, I can't have anything, right? And, and that's not true. You can, but I just want you to be, you know, healthier <laughs> in your choices because I've always told people for the longest time, your purpose and your health go together. Whatever it yeah. is that you've been called to do, you got to be healthy doing it. That is regardless good, of how That's eat, really good. Yeah, but regardless of how you eat, even if you're a person like I deal with people in my job that I help them as far as, you know, their weight or whatever, they're not plant based, but I tell them, you still have to make the best choices possible, even when it comes down to your meat, because here's the thing, you know, when I do different shows and I talk about whether it's cauliflower or mushrooms or, you know, onions or, you know, whatever, you know, plants or vegetables I'm using, the benefits, if you look them up, always have to do with, um, reducing inflammation and mm -hmm. um, reducing yeah. the risk of cancer or um, providing energy or um, building up your um, iron or, you know, more vitamins and nutrients, all these great things that it does for your body. But if you look at like your meats, do they say that? <laughs> I'm just saying. There's no benefits. They don't really talk about the benefits. Not I get it. Not yeah. Like that, you know? And you yeah. gotta think when you eat your food, you eat your food, you chew it, it breaks down, goes down through your esophagus, goes into your stomach, and it separates. So all of the vitamins and nutrients that were in that food that you eat, they go to those various places that your body needs. And then the waste gets discarded. But if you're eating, and here's the other myth, let's go back to this. Here's the other <laughs> myth. So you have people who say, How come like people who are plant based are vegan and like all of them are not healthy. Well, because a lot of people that are plant-based or vegan eat processed foods. My thing is, if you're going to eat something that is vegan processed, you might just go back and eat a burger. I mean, it's really the same food, kind of food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, a absolutely. lot of people who are vegan or, or, or plant-based, they eat a lot of like fried food, fried and greasy. That's not healthy either. No. Right? Or maybe they eat, they, they make up all these different, you know, crazy um, food items. Like maybe instead of a bun, they have a, a vegan donut and a processed burger inside. 
that's still not healthy. That is yeah, not that's to true. say that right. That is not to say that you can't maybe you had that like, you know, once every couple of months as a, you know, mm -hmm. treat or yeah. something. You know? But exactly. if you're getting that on a regular, you're you're just doing your body a disservice. You might just go back to how you were eating. Because at that that's point it's, it's it's not about your health. And so a lot of people get confused and they think, you know, when they see somebody who's plant based they think that they should look a particular way but everybody who is plant-based or vegan they don't necessarily eat healthy i That's consume so vegan chips from time to time but they got to be in moderation i can't eat yeah. them every day right yeah yeah, yeah. That's good. that's good stuff, Paul. That's really, really, really good stuff. And you know, those are that's putting stuff in perspective. It really is. Right. So we had three takeaways, and I think you you mentioned one of them is to know your why. Right. Um, your why. And our mm -hmm. second one is uh, focus on your health. And the third one is if you mess up, get up and start again. So Paula, how do yeah. how do we get a hold of you if we want to fix meals for us? And how do we find out? How do we find you? Um, so you can find me on Instagram at I Choose Life, the number two. Um, I am on Facebook, just as my name, Paula Harrison. Um, you can reach out to me by email, which is I Choose Life, the number two at yahoo.com. Um, and if you say, listen, I just need some help. I, if I could help the world, <laughs> I would. If I could help my, I know you would. You know, as many people as possible, I would. You know, um, I'm one person, but I'm here to do whatever it is that God has called me to do. However many people that I can touch, if I could just get you to change your thought about one meal a day, hey, that's still doing something. And I'm happy about that, you know? Absolutely. I, I, I Absolutely. want people to realize, too, that if you've been diagnosed with something, just say, you know, it's high blood pressure or, you know, diabetes or anything like that. And I say diagnosed because I don't, don't want to give someone an illness, right? So I don't say they have. I say that you've been diagnosed with that because you went to the doctor and that's I love that. yeah. the results show, right? 99.9% um, .9 of those things, if you just change the way in which you eat, you could be healed and you don't have to How? take medication. But what happens is a lot of people, they go to their doctor and the doctor says, diagnosed them and says that they have, um, you know, high blood pressure. And instead mm -hmm. of them coming home and working on changing how they eat, exercising, drinking water, putting more of the good things inside of their body, mm -hmm. they are, they go by the pharmacy and they get a prescription. They get the prescription and they mm. feel like because I have a prescription for what I was diagnosed for, I don't have to change the way in which I eat. Wow. That's powerful. That's sad. That is Ooh. sad. Because God created plants, fruits, and vegetables for our healing. That was our medicine. Wow. So well, we definitely have to have you back on here because I know a lot of us are wanting to choose life too. And so thank you so much for taking your time to come and share this powerful information with us. And uh, for those that didn't catch your information, uh, we'll put that in the comment section. And you can also go to your voice talk show, gmail.com and send us a message and we will get you connected to Miss Paula Harrison. Thank you so thank much, Paula. So much. And I, I can't so wait to get that food over right. there. Yes, this makes this <laughs> this doing this uh, it makes a difference because it allows um, somebody that maybe did not know. And I always tell people if I could just reach one person, I'm happy. So I I really appreciate you. Thank you so very much for um, allowing me to um, cook for your people. Thank you a lot um, so much for being able to share a little bit. But I know that God has given me. I do really yes. appreciate you. And you already know if there's any way that I can help you, I'm here to help you. Oh, we're going to have you back. We definitely want to have you back. Um, so thank we appreciate you. you. You have an amazing evening. And thank you, everybody, that took time to tune in to watch your voice talk show. 
Uh, stay tuned for the next amazing topic we're going to have. And thank you guys that asked, stopped by and asked comments and questions. You were a part of the show because without you, it would not be an interactive platform. So you guys have an amazing evening. And we'll see you next time on your voice talk show. Take care. See you, Paula. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.